Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Hey, good evening, Facebook family. Welcome to another episode of Post Daily Dose with me, your trusted parenting advisor, faithful guidance servant on the healing journey. What's my name? Big Papa Brian Post. Hope everyone is having a amazing Manic Monday. I feel like it's a bit of a Manic Monday. Um, tonight's topic, we're going to talk about meeting behavioral challenges head on. And let me just tell you, it's been a full moon. And the full moon started its development over a week ago and it's still I guess probably Saturday it was like full full moon but let me tell you there is absolute truth to the fact that when it's a full moon like people start acting nutty because I got some families going through it kids acting nutty and it's just like I know it's the pull of gravity I worked in a um school for adult developmentally delayed um, individuals once and I kid you not it was always predictable that when there was a full moon there were more seizures there were more outbursts there was just like things were just nutty and I'm like I said it like last week I'm like there, there's a full moon there's there's a full moon coming I can feel it I'm getting too many calls. <laughs> I, had, I had too many kids like off their rockers. Hey, uh, Johnny, hello there, Mimi, and uh, hey there, Kelly. Yes, I actually I want to. I'm going to do a little bit of research. I want to find out what it is about the the gravity pull, and I think I also heard someone say something about the moon being in retrograde, and so that's probably a whole nother a whole nother dynamic. But there's some truth to that. Um, and it's it's uh, now on on the, on another note on a positive note, all the the parents I've been talking to, it's like they're handling the situations really well. I mean, I'm talking to them, I can hear their kid yelling in the background, and there's like, you know, they're they're staying calm, they're staying pretty regulated, and they're really working hard. So that's the positive because actually, the kid stuff doesn't doesn't phase me at all. Because I, I guess I'm just so used to it. It's when the parents are 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 just if are, are more if not just as stressed out as the kids. That's when it becomes exhausting. Because we're we're supposed to be partners. Hey, Gertie says that. Uh, yep, Lisa says it was tough for her. Um, Gertie says I was on the Amtrak to VA to Chicago overnight, and there was some crazy stuff going on with the full moon. Yep. The conductor said it happened every full moon. I don't know what it is, but there's something about it. Um, that full moon. But um, when it's when it's the kids, I mean, and, and I my role and responsibility is just to my parents to support them through the through the conflict or through the. You know that's that's not a problem. But when it's the parents that have completely lost their minds and are off their rockers, and it's like I have to contain them and get them regulated and work through their stuff. And usually adults are much more resistant than kids because kids are just full blown in in their unconscious. They're just full blown in their brainstem. But with adults, when adults are full-blown in their brainstem, they're constantly trying to rationalize and justify it with their cognitive brain. That's, that's a challenge, and that's really difficult. So I'm just going to tell you, if you've been struggling with your kid over the last week, join the crowd. You're not alone. I'm blaming it on the full moon. Um, you know, some of the, the, the COVID stuff is dying down, I guess, in some places. It's still kind of dramatic in other places. But you're not alone. Uh, parents are struggling. And so one of the things that, uh, that that prompts me to kind of talk about is meeting behavioral challenges head on. And, and I'm always talking about the difference between reactivity and responsibility, prevention versus intervention. I've had two, two uh, coaching calls today with, with parents going through some similar regressed behaviors with their children. And what I, what I heard, and, and this is... This is a uh, you know something I try to encourage parents to do. Hey, there, Mama Wilma. Something I try to encourage parents to do is 
start getting proactive on the front end. So your child is already in a state of dysregulation or their window of tolerance is getting really small. What can you do then to start to engage them? See, and this, is, this goes back to where I say stress causes our attunement mechanism to be dialed down. As, and I had different parents say today that their child woke up, was not in the best mood. They woke up not in the best mood. So that tells me the child's already has a diminished window of tolerance. And But then when we're already stressed, our attunement mechanism is dialed down. Um, is it frozen, Lisa? I think I'm still good on, on this end. Usually it would freeze up on me if, if so. Um, but we'll still be here when you unfreeze. Um, when, the, when the attunement mechanism is dialed down, then what happens is you don't always pay attention. You don't always see it. You don't always see it, nor do you attune to it because it's the attunement mechanism. So the attunement mechanism dials down. You see a behavior situation. You don't attune to it because your, your radar, your dial is down. And so then what happens is you just kind of go along, starts off first thing in the morning. You know, the child gets up from being grumpy. They go to breakfast. They don't like this breakfast. They don't like that breakfast. And then they do want to do their work, but then they get frustrated really easily. And then maybe they settle down for a little bit, but then it's not long before they've escalated. So what happens with that is we've got to start recognizing as parents when when our children are in a state of dysregulation or moving to that state when they've when that window of tolerance is getting smaller we've got to start recognizing that that is our cue to take action okay if if you wake up and your child's your child's window of tolerance is already this small by their grumpiness by their complaining by their whining by their picking at their brother and their sister they're telling you right then they're going to need your love your attention and your energy they're telling you right now you're not going to just you're not going to just and you should know your child well enough by now that something's got to start to happen right then. That's the worst time to try to get your child to do schoolwork. It's the worst time to try to get them to uh, clean up their room or, or try to get them to do chores. They're already showing you that their window of tolerance is small. So meet it head on. Meet it head on by engaging in it. Call it for what it is. Say, hey, honey, I can tell you're already stressed out. Did you have a rough night of sleep? Just acknowledge it. Make it very conscious so you're aware, so they're aware. And then you say, what do I need? What do you need for me to take care of you right now in this moment? How can I take care of you? Forget the other stuff. When your child is stressed, they're regressed. When they're stressed and they're regressed, they're going to act from that place. So if you really want to take it head on, as soon as you acknowledge the stress and you see the regression, attend to the regression. Attend to the regression. Do the best that you can. Now, you cannot always keep your child from going into regression, and you can't always pull them out of it. As Johnny says, sometimes kids don't ask us for what they need, but expect a parent to be intuitive. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they, they don't ask for what they need because at that core reg regress level, they don't trust needs going to be met. Trust that they to be able to share the need. That's another thing. It's not that they expect you to be intuitive. It's that they don't trust the need is going to be met. And so you that's when you really have to take the actions to say, I can tell. I can tell right now something is not okay, and I'm not quite sure what to do. Can you just take a little time and maybe tell me what it is that you need? Get real conscious, get real concrete and real specific. Acknowledge that you don't that you can see that they're dysregulated. Acknowledge you can tell that something's going on, that you're not certain what to do, and then ask for help. And then, you know, at, at a really basic level, you do things like you would with a small child. You make sure they're, they're, they're clean. <laughs> you make sure they've been fed. You know, sometimes they haven't, 
They haven't gotten enough sleep, so you want to honor that and you want to tend to those basic needs before you start layering on the demands. And so I really want to encourage you with your children's challenges, when they start signaling to you, when they start telling you, just do their behavior because that's how they communicate. They communicate through their behavior. Why are they communicating through their behavior? Because they're pre-verbal. They're in that regress pre-verbal place. And when they're in that regress pre-verbal place, they don't have words. Sometimes you can hear the infant in your child. Sometimes you can see the, the negative behaviors within the negative behaviors the emotion of a regressed child and that's who you have to attend to so i really want to, i really want to encourage you start getting dialed in first thing in the morning and when your child is showing you that regress window of tolerance start asking yourself what are the three things what are three things i can do to reduce stress and increase oxytocin and what are three things that i can do that i'd normally do that cause more stress then i can do less of those or i can put them on the back burner and i can't tell you guys enough school can wait school can wait school can wait at the very least do it with them get it done don't let that be a factor and a barrier to your relationship. You're amazing. I hope all my lovely moms had a beautiful Mother's Day yesterday. I just, I, I thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. I have so much honor for you as a strong mom, doing the best you can, showing up here, trying to learn something different, trying to do something different than the way you were raised and taking the risk and having the courage. And it's just an amazing thing. So. Um, hope you have a, a fantastic evening, guys. Uh, remember, in any given situation, we always have two choices. We can continue to react from our same blueprints of stress, fear, and overwhelm, or we can stop, we can slow down, take three to ten deep breaths, and choose love. And I hope you'll continue to be able to choose love when at all possible. Sometimes you just can't do it. Sometimes you just get stressed out, and you just got to act the way you got to act. But keep facing those behaviors head on. Don't let them catch you by surprise. Listen to the signals that your children are giving you and do your best to take it. Even if it has to start first thing in the morning, to let them know I'm tuned in, I'm here, and we're going to get through this. God bless you. Big Papa loves you. Have a fantastic evening, and I'll see you tomorrow.